some Southern Cameroonians in Texas at an informal barbecue to discuss about the ongoing Amazonian war of freedom. SCBC was there and covered the occasion. We now bring to you the images of that occasion. Thank you for, for coming to throw to the barbecue. Um, welcome our special guest, Prof. Uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, John from Austin, Sister Jane, and uh, Sister Edith is based in Dallas, and Sister Jane drove all the way from Austin as well. Um, I know that we are here. When we meet as a people, I think we cannot miss out on the opportunity of discussing and the crisis that we have back home. Um, most of us are not opportunity to meet legends in the profession every day. So when we have that opportunity to meet with our, our professor Carson Anyangwe in our midst, it, it is an opportunity we cannot miss. And it is precisely for that reason that we have comrades drive all the way from Austin to be here with us this afternoon and I really want to appreciate uh, that effort from Sister Jane here seated and uh, um, Mr. Ngat John, the sister at the corner and Sister Edith at the corner. So, so this is very brief and um, our, our revolution, the crisis is experiencing a few uh, trends which is very normal. And uh, right now, I, th I thought that it's, it is important we get some few words of wisdom from Professor Carlson Anyangwe. And uh, after he's spoken, if you do have any questions whatsoever regarding the revolution, um, amongst us we have um, really, we, we also have comrades from all over the world. We have um, Mr. Claudius Anyangwe, who is from Swiss. We have uh, Roland Chebufo from South Africa. And of course, our uh, one and only, Dr. Ngasa Patoroki from, from, from Germany. <laughs> and we are making sure we have this life. We need these encouraging messages to keep our people going. And because that is all about the revolution, you need to keep giving people hope of a better life, of a better identity than that which they have. So um, thanks for actually giving us the time, a few minutes of your time. And Prof, um, if you can say a few words to us for few words of wisdom and encouragement regarding the revolution as a whole, please. Uh, thank you very much. I want to tell the viewers that there is nothing uh, for us to be despair about. That this revolution, in spite of the hiccups we are experiencing, is on track. Ground Zero is firmly committed. We may have a few differences in the diaspora. But that does not affect the overall prosecution of the liberation struggle. I just want to say one or two things. The first thing I want to say is that we must be very, very careful about the terms we use. Some of the terms that are being bandied around are terms that are given to us by the colonial occupier and his allies. We reject the concept of separation. We are not separatists. We are freedom fighters. The concept of separation presupposes that we are part and parcel of French Cameroon. We are not. So when the foreign media tries to convey that idea, they are trying to condition us and will not accept the condition. The second thing is, 
We should not ourselves encourage the colonial occupier in trying to hook us up to the colonial, to the colonizing authority. We are not northwest and southwest of French Cameroon. We have never been part of French Cameroon, and we shall never be part of French Cameroon. Try as much as you can. Thirdly, I just want to say that we ourselves are masters of our own fate. We control our revolution. We know where we are coming from, and we know where we are going to. We shall not, and we should not, let ourselves be dictated to by foreign interests. We are not going to accept to become captives and slaves forever. No country has ever accepted that, not even the United States of America that fought the British for their own liberation. Not even the British or the French or the Italians who fought Napoleon, who fought the Nazis for their own liberation. And there's no reason to suppose that if liberation was good for them to the extent of fighting for it and achieving it, we should not fight and achieve our liberation. And we address the same thing to the Chinese. When Mao Zedong revolted against the bourgeois comprador, but precisely because they didn't want to be subjected to foreign occupation. And we are not going to accept to be subjected to foreign occupation. We reject the idea that we are going to be prisoners and uh, colonized people for eternity. And that's just a message I want to convey to our people. We must control our own narrative. I will must be masters of our own faith. We shouldn't listen to foreign narrative and the kind of things they want to subject us to. And after saying that, I'm open to maybe if there are any questions you want to ask, I will take them. Thank you. Okay, can you give Prof a hand, please? Thank you very much, Prof. Um, I'm sure that um, our members here seated, our comrades here seated, our fellow people here seated, and the viewers, when they do watch this, will really be encouraged by those words. Um, it takes a determined people to see a revolution through, and I am sure that there's never been a people more determined than Amazonians. So there is no doubt that we are going to free our homeland of this uh, oppression and illegal occupation that we are facing right now. So I'll just want to, in order not to prolong this more than it needs to be, I'd like to call on Sister Jane to say something. She uh, is a real to say something. Um, she is a formidable woman based here in Texas and she does quite a lot of work in the background and one of the reasons that I felt it was very important for her to be here was so that um, we can put our heads together and see what uh, diplomatic push we can we can do within the region to take this trouble further. So, but I think uh, on behalf of Texas she might want to, to say a word or two. Thank you, Professor, for just enlightening all the Southern Cameroonians who have gathered here from far and wide to get some insight to this revolution. Thank you, all Southern Cameroonians. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day and busy lives to get here for a common course. We are here in the land of America where there is freedom. The freedom that we enjoy today was not always there. The people of America had to fight for their freedom. And so we have to learn from the lesson that America fought to free their land for us to be able to free our land. Uh, we are fortunate to be here today. We are fortunate to be alive because we are not in southern Cameroon. Most of us sitting here today have family members in southern Cameroon. Some have lost their loved ones and some have their lost loved ones in different countries who have become refugees. 
some are in the forest and this is the raining season. We know how devastating that could be on our loved ones who are in the forest. We are able to eat and sleep when we want. We're able to go to our jobs, perform our daily duties with no restrictions. But our fellow countrymen in Southern Cameroon, they are subjected to torture and killing. And because we have consciences, <coughs> excuse me, we are people with a conscience. We have a conscience and we feel the humanitarian need for the Southern Cameroon to be free from this oppression. Today, together as Amazonians, we are calling on all Amazonians far and wide in the United States, in Europe, Australia, Africa, China, in all the continents of the world to stand up as one people, one voice, and fight for the liberation of Southern Cameroon. We cannot be silent to this ongoing genocide in Southern Cameroon. If we are silent, to the ongoing genocide, we must be part of what is going on. We must be complacent. And we will not be complacent to the killing. Our children, our brothers, and our sisters have been deprived from education for the last three years since 2016. Our leaders who stood up to fight this course, they are in prisons. And we, as Southern Cameroonians, we have decided to stand up together as one people to fight for the liberation of Southern Cameroon. Long live Southern Cameroon and short live the struggle. Thank you, fellow Amazonians, for coming together to share the same view on our liberation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sister Ariel. Um, that was very that was very touching. Um, I know, I know that we have we have countrymen who feel that this revolution is absolutely none of their business. We have countrymen who feel that because they are in the diaspora, they can go about their lives without caring or without giving a hood as to what happens back home. But what they forget is that. Whether they do assist or whether they do um, take part in trying to make sure that this oppression and this genocide comes to an end or not, this genocide affects every single one of us. It really doesn't matter whether you, you can decide to sit on the fence or you can decide to say you are not an Amazonian. The bottom line is that when La Republic du Cameroon and its military pulls or, or pulls the triggers on their guns, it doesn't discriminate between those of you who are in the revolution and those of you who are not. Those bullets kill, kill our families for every single one of us. And there is, there is no justification from where I'm sitting as to why an Ambazonian would feel that the revolution has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with him or her. To me, I see that as a pretext of burying your head in the sand and hoping that it's a bad dream you're having. And maybe someday when you wake up and then you realize it wasn't a dream, but this is not a dream. It's been three years too long for it to be a dream. So those that are still thinking it's a dream need to wake up. We have our president and other leaders in jail who have basically given their lives and are still ready to give their lives for their struggle. And here we are, and look at, at the good examples. We're here having a barbecue, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because the truth is, God did put us in the diaspora for a reason. We should not feel guilty for being in, in the diaspora. We can only feel guilty for being in the diaspora if we do not use the advantage of being in the diaspora to help our people who have been massacred on, the, on, on, on Ground Zero every single day. If we, if we do not help our people, help our leaders, and help all the other boys and ladies that are incarcerated in the jails of La Republic to Cameroon, then we should really be feeling guilty 
of being in a diaspora because being in a diaspora then has no use to our people back home, has no use to the fight for our liberation, and actually has no use to anyone but yourself. And life is not life if it does not help, if you do not use it to help your fellow man. And as they always say, charity begins at home. And what other fellow man are you going to help with your life if not the people that are being oppressed, your own people that are being oppressed? So having said that, um, <laughs> I would say, I don't know, we have amongst us um, Mr. Daniel. Um, maybe you want to say what? Daniel Fonton. yes. Um, I want to thank all of our brothers and sisters for coming together in this wonderful, and I want to thank our brother that provide all this area that we should recite for this. And I want to take my sincere thanks to see Professor Carlson for the second time. I know I met him in 2016 in Houston, where we have a wonderful chat, and so thankful to see him again. God bless for having you. That is the most wonderful person that I can ever imagine. One thing I want to talk about him, maybe you not known, he was selected, if I'm not good, uh, right, he can clarify me. He was selected by La Public during the Sabata talk to represent them. And unfortunately, it was him and Carson and uh, Dr. Simon Mozu to represent La Public on the Sabata talk. And um, when he came, he found that this is his people that he's standing to bargain on behalf of the Republic. He chose to stand on the right side of the game. And so that is why we'll give him one more clap to Carson. So I want to thank you again to seeing you. And one thing I want to clarify, there is one thing they talk about uh, uh, Ambazonia. Ambazonia is a sovereign, distinctive people with a boundary, with uh, people, and we are not separatists. I want to remind everybody, if somebody calls separatists, we are not separatists. Tell them straight on the eye, whether it's a white, it's a black, or whatever. Once he tell you, we are not separatists. That's the point. Separatists is a people that are fighting to separate from a sovereign nation. We came in this forum as people of equal partner. La Republic got their independence in 1960. We got us in 1961. So we came together as people of equal partner. So therefore, we are not separatists. Tell them right there, we are not separatists. We are people of sovereign Cameroon. We want to revise the terms of agreement, the terms, because there is not actually in any agreement mm -hmm. that we came together. We need to sit and discuss people of equal partner. And I want to take this opportunity. There is a certain group, they call them the Republic of Grassfield. They are arguing on the point that their president lost an election, and they want to take an opportunity to use our struggle to um, apply it there, which doesn't work. doesn't work. We are not the same, because we lost our election when Fundi was won an election, and they didn't recognize him, just like the, their own, the so-called the grass fee. We are people of distinctive identity, and we cannot sit on the same table with the people of the grass field. We will sit with La Republic to discuss the terms of our separation, and I want to take a moment, I don't want to, I can talk the rest of the day. I want to take a moment to thank all of you that are gathered here, that our freedom belongs to us. We are in these nations. We are not here by mistake. God asked us to be here at this, this moment, time. at this time of freedom. Amen. So we must stand tell the world community that we are distinctive people and that we are for our freedom and that our land is not negotiable. I want to take a moment to thank all of you and we wish everything goes well. Thank you very much, Comrade Daniel. Um, we need every single bit of knowledge and encouragement that we can get at this time. All the people who are here present, who have a reservation about the fight for our freedom, for people who do not really understand exactly what we're fighting for, for people who have questions about the current challenges that we are facing, please, this is your moment to ask questions and get some answers, some answers you can use to work with for the benefit of Ambazonia. So please don't be shy. 
They said the only stupid question is the questions you don't ask. So please. You ask questions, otherwise I'll ask. I'll ask a question. Yes. My name is Jimmy. Okay. Yes. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the uh, current division we are having in our, in our environment. Some communities we used to be together all the time, and for some reason things are happening. That's what's really my concern at this time. How do we come back together as one? Prof, you want to take that? Or oh, yes, I? yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe Comrade Jakar asked a very important question. Mm -hmm. And this question has been asked by many other people. But I just want to say, uh, uh, let's also not be, not exaggerate some of these things. Um, it would have been a miracle if we had of uh, uniformity throughout. And uh, the mere fact that we are human beings means that we have differences. Other differences of perception or differences of strategy or differences of progressing or different same things. This is not peculiar. And I want to tell our people, this is not peculiar to our own situation. And, and let me just remind people, um, take, take Angola, for example, in the liberation struggle. They had at least four liberation movements. And on the day of their independence, there were two or three independent declarations that were made by different liberation movements in different capitals. I'm not saying that that means that we must go that route, or like Americans say, that route. <laughs> but I'm saying that this is not strange. It's normal, so to speak, in between because it's normal. And we shouldn't actually emphasize on that. We should look on more on the things that unite us. If you ask all the different groups that we're talking about, all of them are clear on one thing, that the independence of the Southern Cameroon and Bajina is non-negotiable. You can go up and down and say whatever you want to say. So that is a clear positive sign. We are all united in that. The fact that we might be disagree on exactly how we go about on leadership should not actually obscure that fact. Secondly and vitally, the Lack of unity we are talking about, again, is something we see amongst us in the diaspora. Um, but if you look at ground zero, I would suggest that we have probably one of the best fighting forces you've ever seen in the world. And I say this, because you find young men and women, and I emphasize women because people don't realize that there are women fighting uh, on the ground. Who previously had no military training whatsoever. And within a short space of time, they've demonstrated a wonderful capacity to conduct a war and to conduct it responsibly and not commit the kind of atrocities which French Cameroon so-called trained soldiers are committing. And that is something, and I consider that as one of the things you've never seen happen in the world. And when history shall be written tomorrow, these fighters will be reckoned as one of the best, not just in Africa, but in the world, and a very disciplined uh, fighting force. Never mind the propaganda surrounding it when things happen and so on. That's part of the enemy's war strategy, project a propaganda, say things and so on. So the uninformed international community buys that kind of narrative. But those of our people who are informed, our own people know exactly what we are fighting and where we are getting to. So I'm not unduly worried about the quote-unquote division that is amongst us. Um, eventually, that so-called division will itself peter out, and I believe that by the end of the year, people are going to see that there is a necessary clarification that is going on, and the division will no longer be there, as people say. So that's what I would say on that question. So, may I ask a comrade who has a question if, if the question has been satisfactorily answered? Yeah, I think he's answered the question very well. Um, thank you very much uh, for that question. I, I believe that um, for every five Ambazonians that one meets, that question comes up at least four times or three times. Six. So we are going to share that answer why, um, um, fast it. and why, mm -hmm. so Ambazonians can get the answer. I think people must not, 
people must not underestimate the, the positivity or the positive uh, aspects of this um, so-called so division. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we were not having different um, people speaking for Ambazonia. It would be very easy for La Republic and its masters to compromise any single entity that was speaking for us. But because we are seemingly having different people, it is impossible to infiltrate or to kind of try to corrupt all these individuals to sell us off as that would have been their very first reaction to buy them off or kill them. And, and get this whole revolution. They tried that when we had the IG and they thought that by arresting our leaders and locking them up, by arresting the president and others and locking it up, that was going to um, calm kind down of, the situation. Yes, kind of, kind of stop the revolution. But what they realized was that we are stronger than that. Um, it is not about the leaders. It is about the freedom for our our motherland. It is about the liberation of our motherland. And we have more than nine, eight, more than eight million of us. So if you do arrest or kill some of us, the rest of us will keep fighting until we are free. And that is just the the spirit. That is the faith that Ambazonians need to have, because with that faith, we'll be we'll be we'll be able to work together. We'll be able to love one another and we'll be able to forge ahead. The international community is not going to give us our freedom, as some people make the, uh, uh, seem to think that um, the Secretary of State for the U.S. will have to make a pronouncement to free us or some EU committee will make a statement to free us. That is not going to happen. We will only, we will only get our freedom when we continuously demand for it and the rest of the world has no choice but, but to respect that because that's all they have to do. They have to then respect our decision to, to own our freedom, to own our motherland, and to run our territory as we see fit. That is the only way we'll be able to gain our freedom. So, um, any other question, ladies and gentlemen? I know you have lots of questions. Please don't go home with them and then start writing on social media. We need you to ask the questions, the questions here so that when you go back and you find the same questions on social media, you'll be able to answer as you have been answered. I want to... Welcome everybody. I'm not from Dallas, but I'm from Texas, so I'm welcoming people in the name of Dallas. Um, my observation here is that we, as Amazonians, we have to ask ourselves. I want everybody to take this question home. Who am I in this revolution? Okay? We've had people who have been fighting this fight since the 1960s. We have our veritable and legendary prof here. He's one of those old ones, and so many of them have been there. So let us ask ourselves, who am I? Once you are able to reflect on this question, you'll be able to know whether you are standing at the gate or are you involved. Revolutions are things that you have to have them from your heart. So if we are doing pattern in a revolution, it's not, it's not, it's not going to give us the, the results we want. So if you are going to do a revolution and you are just doing it like, you know, putting one leg and trying if the water is deep for you to go in or not, it's not going to help us. So I want all of us here, when you go home, ask yourself, who am I in this revolution? What, are you, what is your contribution? We have seen the Eritrean revolution evolve here. I can't say that Southern Cameroonians are poor, no. But they had to support, to give what you have in this revolution. It's lucky. I can't say that. So we need to reflect individually. You think for yourself before you think about a group that are sitting together. So you ask that question. And the other, th the other thing I want to touch on is, I don't think that it is a good thing to us. I have the right to my opinion. Of course. But I want to ask Prof here what he thinks. What is the what 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 are we? we what is our state of this revolution at this point? With all what we have had here, how can you evaluate? It? Are we progressing in the right way, or we want to look at something that is going to help us more? 
I understand that people have different ways of fighting. You know? I can hold somebody and bend their arm and you hold somebody from the leg. People have their various ways of fighting. But my question is, where, what is the state of these revolutions? I would like to ask both. And before I end, <coughs> you know, I've just asked him one no, continue. You permit me to. It's no problem. The other thing I want to say is that uh, we as a people, we should look and focus on our revolution rather than people. That's right. We should focus on our revolution. What are we fighting for? Do not focus on leaders. Don't go and focus your attention on somebody. Okay? It is through this knowledge and this belief in a revolution that we are going to progress. We are not going to progress if we keep adoring people, individuals. If all of them are for the revolution, then the only problem should be that revolution, right? So everybody cannot be for a revolution and then people are following this guy here, following that person there, following that one there, following that one there. So that is what I have to contribute here. And I would like Prof to maybe address my small concern about our state of the Comrade, may I just ask your name, please? We miss John, you. John Ga. Okay. Prof, I didn't want to stop you. I just wanted to complete the information because yes, otherwise before they will say fake news. <laughs> 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 you said the comrade said this. I said no. Fake news. The Dangasa has invented again. Yes. So, Prof, it's over to you now. Yeah, I think the comrade asked two very critical questions. The first one is asked, which is very important. Who are we? Who are we? And the second question they ask is the stage in which we are at the revolution. So I'll take those two questions in turn. Who are we? These questions relate to the issue of identity. And it's so important that French Cameroon has spent 60 years trying to destroy us as a people and try to ensure that it annihilates our distinctive identity as a people and a people who have a homeland that is called the Southern Cameroon's Amazonia. That has been the colonial project of French Cameroon for the past 60 years. We have to destroy these people. They must not know that they have an identity. They must not know that the homeland is their homeland. We belong to them and no other person. And that project, part of this struggle is to destroy that project to deconstruct that colonial project and recenter the fact that we are the people of Ambazonia. The adoption of the name Ambazonia is precisely to recenter that issue. Because each time we start talking about the Southern Cameroon, Southern Cameroon, it's absolutely confusing. And I've had a question asked to me by foreigners who ask, we don't understand. One moment you say you are Southern Cameroons, next moment you are West Cameroon, next moment you are Northwest, you are Southwest. What is this territory? And let's be fair, it is very confusing. And none of these names were chosen by us. The names were imposed on us. The Southern Cameroon was imposed on us by the British. West Cameroon was imposed on by a new colonial authority, French Cameroon. Northwest, Southwest was a territory that was divided into two by French Cameroon and imposed on us. And strangely, we call ourselves Northwest, Southwestern. I've never heard somebody from French Cameroon say, I'm a littoralian, or a centralian, or Eastern, or where is it that we accept this colonial imposition? Which reminds me, in those old days when the early Christians came, you gave the name of a child, which is our own local names. And they said, oh, no, no, we don't accept that. It's heathen. It's not Christian. 
And uh, this girl's child name is Mary. The boy's owner is Ham John. Complete change of identity. Because our name of our children, given traditional names, have a meaning. And not only just a meaning, it links them up to our territory. This is exactly what the French Cameroon people have been doing. To uproot us, we don't know where we are, and we identified as appendages of French Cameroon. We are northwest of French Cameroon, southwest of French Cameroon. That's all we are, to without an identity. And therefore, a people even without roots and without an authority. So it's, that's why I say it's a very important question which has asked what is in, 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 in academic circle is called identity politics. But it's very important. And that is why, for once, we decided ourselves to adopt the name Ambazonia. I'm not suggesting that that name is cast in stone. The day we get to Boya, after that we settle in Boya, we go to a parliament, and our people, sitting there as a constituent assembly, will accept the name Ambazonia, or come whatever name they want. They want to call it Coco Country. That is purely their own right. Welcome Coco Country. We cannot contest that. Yes. But the point would have been that we ourselves have decided to give ourselves a name because we recognize ourselves as belong to that. So identity is very, very important. And we are not going to allow French Cameroon again, ever, to dictate to us who we are and to give a name to us. That's why I keep on rejecting any appellation called Southwest or Northwest and whatever thing it is. We shouldn't. And the only reason why we're keeping Southern Cameroon and Bazonia for historical reason, and to say, okay, during the colonial period, British colonial period, we're known as a trust territory of the Southern Cameroon under British administration. And many people don't realize that Southern Cameroon was in opposition to another part of called the Northern Cameroon. People don't know this. So for the time being, to get people's minds settled, we juxtapose the two, but eventually we get that. I'm proud to say, like, 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 like a young child here in the military academy here in America also, yes. when she introduced herself, I'm a proud Ambazonian in here in the America, University of America, in the military academy. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing. We must connect to introduce ourselves as Ambazonians. When we get to Goya, we sit there and our constituent assembly adopt that name or some other name, then we say we are. This has been the process of all of these things. Namibia was exactly in the same situation. It used to call Southwest Africa. Mm -hmm. oh, you imagine right. a country that you know you are Southwest African. Hey, horrible. And the guy sat down and said, What? We are Southwest Africans? What does that mean? They said, No. They went back to their roots. They named Deza, which is in Namibia, and they called from there, they called Nami Yes. And at first, the same reaction of fire amongst some of people. Oh, I know it's a Southwest Africa that is known internationally. Blah, 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 stuff. Even the UN itself was forced to accept Namibia. Before the Namibia became independent, so Namibia. Yeah. So we're not doing something which is new, which is strange. Identity is very, very important. We identify ourselves. So I'm saying we identify ourselves and that identity links us to territory. And we are the sovereign owners of that territory. Nobody else on earth can ever own that territory. Never mind the propaganda of French Cameroon. They can never own our territory. Our people are the owner of the land. And if you listen to our fighters, they keep on repeating this. We will not allow them to come and take the land from us. We are the sovereign owners of that land. Nobody else. And I will suggest to you that even in international law, the land cannot belong to any person or the people of that territory. I mean, it doesn't make any sense that there are people inhabiting a territory and this belongs to, like you're living in a house here, then they say somebody else has the house, they are living inside. No. So identity is very important. Second question, the stage at, at which we are in this struggle. Very important. I suggest to you also that this struggle has reached a critical stage. When this thing started in 19, uh, 2016, when the lawyers started, as usual, I've always believed that we are a very docile people. It's taken us 60 years 
to come through some of these things. But the fact that we are doing so doesn't mean that we are stupid. We are a very resilient people. If you all recall, before 2016, year in, year out, our people were demonstrating, especially every October 1st, you can be sure people are going to be killed, you're going to be arrested, thrown in jail, and so on. We are people who have been terrorized since 1961. And I've always argued that French Cameroon has progressed from being a police state to a terrorist state. And what is going on now is terrorization of our people. And they tried that in 2016, hoping we can be terrorized into giving up our rights. For once, we were mistaken. Because our people never gave up. And we carry on, I will carry on, I will carry on. By 2017, when the massacre took place on the 22nd of September and the 1st of October, nobody gave us a chance. You will recall, the colonial oppressor gave his army, I don't know, one or two months or three months. And for them, they were just going to wipe us out. Three years down the line, they're still trying to figure out how to defeat these people. It's never going to happen. And I'm saying, we have set our people and we are prepared to engage in this war for the next 50 years, I'm saying, five zero years. And we are going to conscript people, the very people who have been put into the IDP camps, refugee camps, by the time these ones are already getting old enough, those ones to be in their early 20s are ready to pick up the gun and continue the fight. And those ones in the early 20s, by the time they get to 30s, the ones who are coming, so it, there shall never be an end to this whole thing. And I'm saying, 8 million Amazonians are giving French Cameroon and France and its allies the opportunity to exterminate us if they can. 8 million people were prepared to sacrifice 4 million people, 5 million people even you still have three million that are going to ensure that victory comes. So, in this, at where we are at this struggle now, it's a decisive turn. The pressure is not on us. It is on the colonial occupier. As the days go by, our girls and boys who are fighting are perfecting the art of war. They are improving their strategies, they are improving their techniques, and the casualty rate is on the enemy's side, not on us. Pressure is on them. And good sense will dictate that they simply pack out of our territory, go back to their territory, which existed with their border very secured on 1st of January 1960, and just leave us alone to reorganize our lives, to rebuild our territory that has been destroyed. And let us come back home, and we are going to set for them a state, one of the modern states I've ever seen in Africa. So at the very moment as we're talking, the determination of our fighters is very, very grim. The determination of the diaspora is grim in ensuring that victory comes ultimately. Maybe tomorrow, maybe 10 years' time, maybe 20 years' time, maybe 30 years' time. We are prepared to carry on this war for the next 50 years. So we are not counting the days as the days go by. We are not counting. Whether French Cameroon is going to sustain this thing, that is their problem, not our problem. Whether they have their, their contested president, illegitimate president, will survive for the next 10, 25 years, that is their problem. It is not our problem. But one thing we are sure, that there is fire in the house even in French Cameroon itself. Thank you. something into the question on the question what is the stage of our revolution I want to thank professor for his good analysis but um, to the stage of our revolutions I am confident that we have reached the point where we don't need to Sorry about that. yeah we have reached a stage of our revolution that we don't need struggle despite the fact that we may have some differences among the leadership, but I don't think it's going to affect our struggle. 
uh, at the moment we have witnessed a sharp influx of leadership, not just within our own self, but leaders within the, across the community that we have, they have remained silent. Recently, we have a Congress uh, lady, uh, Baz. Uh, Karen Baz. Baz. Karen Baz. Karen Baz that just left. And it wasn't her alone. There were other members of the Congress that just came back and they're giving their own analysis. We are not aware of the data yet. And we have uh, foreign journalists. France Vancard, other TV media stations had not engaged. So initially, we're probably our brothers who were standing face us, and me and some few others that were carrying on these conversations to bring the attention to the world community. Today, the world community that has been silent has taken over, and we believe that we are on the right foot. I don't believe that we are going to be struggling. So we are going to succeed. Thank you.